Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about the combo box row limit. Yeah, most of you probably never ran into it because it's 65,000 records, but sometimes it happens. So we're going to take a look at that, how to get around it, and we'll talk about shortening the load delay because sometimes those combo boxes with lots of rows in them can take forever to load. So you ready? Here we go. Today's question comes from Abigail in Edmond, Oklahoma, one of my Platinum members. Abigail says, I have about 500,000 customers in my database. For some reason, I can't see all of the records in the table. What do I have to do to get all of the records in there? When I scroll down to the end, the list is cut off. Also, the combo box takes forever to load, especially since I'm pulling data across a network. How can I speed this up? Well, Abigail, let's first take a look at the row limit, and then the solution for that will probably also speed up the load time. So let's take a look. Before we get into it, this is a developer level video, so the solutions I'm gonna show you, well, mostly require some VBA programming. You can kind of do a little bit of it without that, and I'm gonna show you one method, but the best methods, of course, are gonna require some programming. So if you've never done any programming before and you wanna learn, Check out my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. All right, now first, I need a database that's got lots and lots of records in it. In one of my recent videos, turning access into a database server, I actually built a button to do that. It added like 300,000 records to my database. So you don't have to watch this video if you don't want to, but I'm gonna go grab that database to use right now. If you are interested in this series, go watch it. It's pretty good. I'll put a link down below. All right, so here is that database. And the purpose of this database was to have a front end back end. The back end is on the server and it runs constantly in a loop and it looks for commands. So you can run queries and stuff that'll process on the server much faster and then just send you the information that you need. But the whole reason why I grabbed this database is because I've got a customer table that I built that has, and you can see it's taking forever to load now, 300,000 records in it. Now. Combo boxes and list boxes have a maximum of roughly 65,000, I think it's 535 records, okay? So if you've got 300,000 customers in your table and you want a combo box showing all of them, you can't do it. You just can't. It's a, it's a physical limitation of access. But you really shouldn't be loading thousands and thousands and thousands of records in your combo box anyway. So what you should do is somehow filter or uh, reduce that number by any number of other means, I'm gonna show you a couple today. Now what I did, if you're familiar with this database, what I did was in the customer form, go to orders and watch how long this takes to load. See, it's loading because it's filling that combo box with records. See how long that took? And this is a local database. I, I pulled in the tables locally, so we're not even pulling records across the network. This is just on this PC. All right, and you can see, there's my customers. I sorted them, okay? And if you hit control end, come down to the very bottom, you can see, there we go. The last record is customer 65535. That's the maximum number of customers you can have. And I've got 300,000 customers in here like you saw before. So there's a whole bunch of them that are not in there, okay? So we need to whittle this list down some. Now, there's a lot of things you can do. I recommend basing that off of a query where you can do you know whatever filtering you can. For example, in my database, I got a thing called is active. Now, this is an order form. Obviously, in this combo box, you might not want to see active customers. Or excuse me, inactive, inactive customers. Now, if we look at the row source for this, it's select customer ID LF from customer LFQ. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, customer LFQ just takes last name and first name and puts it together in a query for me so I can have it in one field. So you see it in the combo box when the combo box drops down. Here it is right here. Customer LFQ, takes a minute to load because there's so many records in there. Okay, and there's your LF. So what we can do is we can limit this to only show active customers. All right, so we'll just design view this guy here and we'll add is active, where are you? There it is, All right? And we'll set the criteria here to true. Save it. And now when I run it, you're gonna get a much smaller list of records. There you go, there's only 20 of them. All right, there's my 20 active customers. So now, when that combo box goes to run over here, you're only gonna get 20 records. 
All right, see that? Now, the problem is, is that if you have an order, let's say for Joe Smith, okay, and then Joe Smith moves out of your area or he dies or whatever, and he's no longer active. So you come in here and you mark him as active as no. Now, this order will not show his name in here, even though this is his order. Okay, now we can fix that with the query. Now, this query relies upon this form being open. Okay, uh, so does the order form. The order form requires the customer form to be open. If not, it can't get that value as the default value. So all we have to do is we have to say, look, show me all the active customers or this customer. Okay, and we can do that by modifying the query in here, design view. All right now we got customer ID, last name, first name, and is active. All right, if we add a criteria over here to say the customer ID has to be equal to the current customer on the customer form or an active customer, we can get away with that, right? But we got to make sure to put it down one row. So remember, it's an or condition, and across or down, right? And across or down. If you're not familiar with that, go watch this video. So in here, I'll put forms, customer F, customer ID, okay? Let me make this wider so you can see everything that's in there. All right, so you're gonna get customer ID, last name, first name, is active, where either is active is true or it's the current customer. And again, this query requires the customer form to be open. Save it, close it. Now when we open this guy up, in here now we see just the customers that are active, all right? Much, much shorter list. And yes, it still takes a little while to run because that query still has to chew through all the records, even though it's only displaying the 20 that are active. Now, let's say this is now, this is my order here, right? Let's say, let's close this. Let's say I'm no longer active, okay? Close it and reopen it so it refreshes, all right? Now, if I go back into orders, you could see I still show up in the box because the query says active people or the current customer. So you'll still see him even if you limit the records, okay? And you can do this trick with anything that you want. You can you can make a form field out here that's got uh, you know a state on it. Like out here, you could put a, a combo box or a text box where you could put some other kind of filtering mechanism. You could do cascading combo boxes, right, in here. That's where you've got another combo box that limits the records. Let's say by state, right? What's the customer state? Pick New York, and then it'll show you a list of customers just from New York. I've got a whole separate video on how to do cascading combo boxes. Very powerful stuff, right? List of cities, for example. You pick the state first, and then the city combo box only shows cities from that state. You could do the same thing in your order form. All right, you got 300,000 customers. Well, pick the state first or any other type of criteria that you could think of to limit them down. You got regions, you got sales reps, whatever. Then the customer combo box will only show the customers from that state or that region. Another method you could use is to filter the combo box results in place as you type. Now, I got a whole separate video about this topic that goes into a lot more detail, but let me go through the basics real quick for you. But go watch this first if you, if you haven't watched this yet. In fact, go watch that video now because this is a good spot to break for today. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel, and we'll continue on with part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly.
Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.